Hello and welcome to the episode 302 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we'll talk about an appearance on Granada Television, the completion of We Can Work It Out, and more filming for Magical Mystery Tour. Let's start with the usual night performance at the Kaiser Keller on the 29th of October 1960. The Beatles, in their quintet lineup with Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed at the club for their ongoing first residence in Hamburg, West Germany. One year later, in 1961, with Pete Best still on the drummer's seat, the Beatles performed at the Hambleton Hall in Liverpool for a concert booked by Wally Hill and Vic Anton. In 1962, the Beatles, finally in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, recorded their second appearance for the Granada Television's program People and Places, rehearsing from 11 am to 1 pm, and then filming a performance of Love Me Do and A Taste of Honey for the show. A curiosity about the performance of Love Me Do. The stage was set so that John Lennon was the only one sitting down singing without an instrument, while the rest of the band performed the song, just like a solo singer and his backup group would do. The show was broadcast on the 2nd of November in the north and northwest of England, from 6.30 to 7 pm. On the 29th of October 1963, during a morning session at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, producer George Martin and his team completed the stereo mixdowns for the With The Beatles album. The work took only three hours, between 10 am and 1 pm, reflecting the scarce importance of stereo compared to mono at the time. In the evening, instead, the Beatles played the last date of their Swedish tour at the Sport Hallen in Elskiltuna walking on stage at 7 pm and playing their set in front of 2,000 people. Also on the bill for the night, Jerry Williams, The Violence, Trio Mebamba, The Telstars and Mona Scarstorm. On this date, in 1964, the Beatles' British tour continued with two concerts at the ABC Cinema in Plymouth. In 1965, the Beatles were at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, London, to undertake some extra work on We Can Work It Out. Paul McCartney double-tracked his vocals and John Lennon added an extra harmonium part. Completed between 2 and 4 pm, this song and Day Tripper were mixed down in mono twice between 4 and 5 pm once for the single release and once for the mimed performance in the upcoming filming of the TV special The Music of Lennon and McCartney. 1967, a month of the endless work for the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film, had highlighted the need for the shooting of three additional sequences, needed to better tie together the final version of the film. On the 29th of October, it was the turn of a sequence in which Ringo Starr and Jesse Robbins are seen walking up to a Countess Road while arguing, turning into Lavender Hill and then boarding the coach. And there's no need to argue here. Jumping aboard this coach requires you to do a bit of work and or to make a small donation. Visit www.simonmas.com support and check out all the things you can do to help out with the production of this podcast and of more music-related content. Think about it and act on it. Or lose your chance to say that you were there from the start. Thank you! On the 29th of October 1968, between 10am and 1pm, Engineer Jeff Emerick worked at the EMI Studios with tape operator Graham Kirkby without the presence of George Martin or Annie Beetle to complete the stereo mixes of Hey Bulldog, All Together Now, All You Need Is Love and Only a Northern Song to include them on the master tape of the Yellow Submarine soundtrack album. The album was delayed because the Beatles wanted their new, eponymous LP, to be released first, 
and to receive enough time to sell unimpeded by any other destruction, so to speak. Well, this concludes our efforts for the day. Tomorrow you'll see how the Beatles took a step that eventually ruined their first residency in Hamburg. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.